Nerd School is a member of the Queen City Podcast Network, powered by Ortho Carolina. Now offering video visits so you can take control of your orthopedic care from the comfort of your home. Schedule online at orthocarolina.com. Ortho Carolina, you improve. Hey, fellows. It's the first night of the season. Nerd School. Nerd School. Nerd School. <laughs> Oh, my glasses hey. are broken. Surprise me. My pocket is protected. Surprise me. I'm a super nerd. Surprise me. Hey. Excelsior. Excelsior. I am a super nerd. The Nerd School Podcast. Starring Andy. I uh, am a former um, entertainment journalist. The star spangled man with a plan. <laughs> TBJ. Welcome, congratulations. You did dirt. Ta-da. I got no shame. <laughs> I am what I like to call a surprise nerd. Art star. I am not an incel. Dark star. He's the nerd Gotham City deserves. And uh, yours right. truly, <laughs> call me Joe. <laughs> Joe Bird. Okay, now to the to the movie. We got to the director. We, 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 we've been, in, Joe. We've been in the movie. We just, you know, we didn't we let you ask done. questions yet. We, yeah. we gave Andy gave you backstory. Yeah. He gave you his five bullet points. Yeah, so, and yeah, we, that's yeah. great. That's we a got great. Into it. It's a great way to start. But I wanted to just. I have a quick question at the beginning of the movie because the Chitari, like right away, it starts with the Chitari and the Tesseract thing, and I just wrote. WTF is this like I forgot <laughs> so I hadn't watched the Avengers like I think I wa- when it first came out I know I watched it and I was like holy shit this is so cool but right at the beginning I had this dread like when they show the Chitari talking like right away I was like oh no this reminds me of that Masters of the Universe movie they did that was so shitty and how, <laughs> how that guy looked like Skeletor the actor was talking. Like remember how crappy Skeletor was in that? Like uh, I was like, "Oh no, this is going to be stupid and crappy." And I was like I was like, "No, I remember this being good. What is this crap? What's this Chitari crap?" <laughs> and then I was like, I stopped it and I write this down. And I was like, "Wait, I know this has to do with Th- like are these Thanos's people or what is the Chitari yeah. or what's the Yeah, yeah. it's you you did see the end sequence where that's the first time we see Thanos. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that the basically these are spoiler the Andy. army of of aliens that are serving Thanos. Although in the comic books, uh, the Chitari were introduced in the, the Ultimate comic books. Uh, when so they, they weren't around until the two thousands. The Chitari. Yeah. And they were uh, basically oh, nine, nine, knockoffs nine, of the Skrulls. They were shapeshifters. Uh, in the comics, and like they were used in because they didn't want to use the scrolls yet or something in the ultimate books. I'm not sure what the, why the choice was made, but uh, so is Thanos a newer character too? No, no, Thanos has been around oh. for for decades. Right. But uh, the Chitari, they just the movie decided to like, all right, what aliens can the Avengers stomp and everyone will enjoy watching them stomped. Mm-hmm. Um, these Chitari guys, they were just invented. Let's just throw them in there as, as soldiers at the stomp. Because in the the Ultimate Universe, there was Ultimate Spider-Man, there was Ultimate X-Men, and then there were the Ultimates, which is what they called their version of the Avengers. They didn't call them the Avengers oh. in the Ultimate Universe. They were the Ultimates. And uh, like Thor was this big sort of uh, obnoxious hippie guy. But his name <laughs> was still uh, Thor. They still have the same Yeah, name. yeah. And Captain America was more of a... a asshole and, <laughs> really uh, <laughs> yeah did you guys all read the ultimates were you guys all into that i did i, I did not it. tbj I, no. uh, yeah i was really into it for a little while like i thought the ultimate spider-man build was good and the ultimate x-men was hit and miss and the ultimates like the first couple were like were solid although i didn't love them and then like i think there was like the third edition of ultimates they decided to say that Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch were actually banging each other. Oh, and like, that's gross, brother. And sister. Uh, I don't want to read this anymore, ever. And <laughs> so, and I got kind of that. I think they kind of soured me on the entire concept of the whole Ultimate Universe, so I just stopped reading it all. <laughs> and little, then eventually, like incesting. a lot of people did, and then they sort of they more recently they've 
blown up all the alternate realities and kind of merged them all so they could have Miles Morales in the regular universe. And, uh, and there was an evil Reed Richards and not much else <laughs> that they saved from the, the ultimate universe, I guess. But what was I talking about? How, oh, Chitari. Yeah, oh, yeah they were just Chitari. like uh, shapeshifty aliens that uh, the event, the Ultimates had to fight. Yeah. So in this movie, they said, "All right, here, these are people the Avengers can stomp on, and won't be uh, everyone will love it." But they were still threatening. They were still mm-hmm. scary. I, I loved how freaked out the Avengers were by facing this. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, it was. I mean, the, the ultimately it ended up being a, a cool thing that they had to fight these things this portal and this whole thing was so like monsters coming down and everything that's a superhero movie mm-hmm. superhero comic book um and the tesseract they you know they talk about the tesseract and all that um is the tesseract i've probably already asked this in uh, on one of our 29 episodes mm-hmm. or 32 or whatever we have is that is that is the tesseract ever in comics or is that just something they made for the movie the Tesseract, as we learn later, is actually the Space Stone, one of the Infinity Stones. Oh, that's mm-hmm. right. However, uh, in this form, it's certainly in re- uh, uh, it's a reference to the Cosmic Cube, which is mm-hmm. a separate thing in Marvel Comics okay. that can kind of uh, shape reality and manipulate things. And the Red Skull is always obsessed with it. And he was oh, in... Oh, right. Yeah, you did. The yeah, he was in Captain America. Yeah. And so... Uh, and I don't know if they decided that the Tesseract was an Infinity Stone at this point, but I'm guessing they did since they introduced Thanos as well. And Thanos' whole thing is the Infinity Stones mm-hmm. or Infinity Gems as they are in uh, uh, the comics. Okay. I have one other big question at the end of this beginning scene, this beginning bit that I it's prob- uh, I almost hesitate to ask it because I feel like it's probably stupid. Uh, but I ask a lot of stupid questions. So yeah, no, stupid no stupid questions, questions. Joe. Only stupid answers. Yeah. <laughs> so that you know, then they cut to the base is being evacuated. Colson Colson's wearing sunglasses at night, uh, and then we have Fury and Hill show up while Colson explains that the whole Tesseract turned itself on and all that. And they're ordering evacuation um, now. Several times at this part, they talk about phase two prototypes get the phase two prototypes shipped out phase two prototypes get them out of here get them out on the truck so right away i'm like this is the last movie of phase one marvel phase one (laughs) is this on purpose calling these phase two prototypes and that's phase two of the mcu like is that like a inside i don't think it is i don't think so because it's just i mean all phase two is is like basically nuclear bombs powered by the Tesseract. Yeah. That's all they turn out to be. And they come back later in the movie. So, so that, I don't think it's a Joe, Joe wants them to be an Easter chicken. That's what Yeah, so that's what I thought of my so th- He's so, searching for an Easter so chicken. What, but I don't think that's one. So what they're calling phase two prototypes, that's a weapon. That's has nothing to yeah, do with just, yeah. phase it's two. It's a legit MCU. term because when you test things, you test it in phases. I know yeah. we're used to Marvel in phases, so it's not it's not out of the norm for them to use the word phase. Right. Two well, because they the probably weapon. didn't even have this called. This probably wasn't even called MCU Phase One yet at that time, right? Because they, we didn't know they were. Uh, they probably had that written down somewhere. They knew. They probably. Yeah, did. I'm sure they, it was like wish. Like they yeah. were still going. Is this all going to work? Yeah. Like, yeah. The Avengers. This movie was like the culmination of. Does our experiment work? And it, it yeah. did gangbusters. So they're like, all right, now we can just plot ahead as if. All this is going to work. This makes it. We have the basis. Let's plan into the future. Yeah. Although I, I you know, I, they obviously were planning uh, Captain America two, Iron Man three, all this stuff. Yeah. But uh, they had it's... thoughts. I don't think it was a chicken joke, but um, you never know. You can never no. know. Well, I don't Marvel. know if uh, later I have some that I thought was an Easter chicken. I think, but this I just thought was, is this the, is this them? And I'm just now noticing that they're referring to. The next thing is phase two. Like they're like phase two is actually spoken in the movies, but it's not. It's not that. It's not yeah, this is just the, uh, the it's just the phase two of their Got this what is this, this just the weapon? Doesn't have an official name. Bombs. How many phases have there been of MCU? Oh, uh, this is phase four we're in now. We're in phase yeah. four. But this Yeah, one division started phase four. Phase four, okay, gotcha. Um so my next thing was Hill. What's her deal? And you kind of explained all that because I wasn't sure if she was somebody. 
So that's interesting. She is somebody, but it's a relatively spoilers. Also, side note, no, uh, Joe, you're gonna have to edit my cat out because it's her dinner time and she is loud. She just is just speaking of so so you're talking about cat and I just said spoilers. Somewhere down the line, this could be like the whole Captain Marvel thing. You know, do we have like Maria Hill and Nick Fury and then Nick Fury getting scratched by the the cat and and the said movie kind of thing? Mm-hmm. So just this kind of I'm just trying to tie in the whole cat sound. He's like, I'm so gonna tie does, it all together. I'm gonna yeah. so he, he doesn't have to article. edit out the cat. We put the cat into the whole <laughs> podcast and it, it comes back once we get them Captain Marvel. Wait, so Marie- he can save I'll the make audio work. of her screaming at us. She's screaming from the top of the stairs, but she's gonna get really loud on my recording when she gets to the bottom of the stairs. Just yeah, FYI. I, I think we're probably gonna wrap up here in a minute anyway, but um but Hill so Hill turns into Catwoman later, is what you're saying? No, 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 no. That's but, a different. That's a different. Um, comic that's book that's house. something dealing with the cat, and then, and you know, the, the further we get into, uh, like Captain Marvel gives us some Maria Hill Giddy. Oh, Giddy, yeah. So. Okay. So it's coming, Joe. Just, just be okay. patient. I gotta also, be patient. Catwoman is DC. It's it's just not. It's not so Marvel. we got we got Hill, and. Uh, What's Brie Larson? What's her character's name? Captain Marvel. Captain Does she have a person's name though? Like Carol Danvers. Carol Danvers. That's right. And then we have Tiana <laughs> Paris. A person's name. Tiana. Yeah, she's not, also not Tiana Paris. Uh, she could be Photon or Pulsar or Spectrum or Tiana Paris's name in the show. <laughs> Monica, is Rambo. Monica Rambo. God dang it! Yeah. <laughs> All right. Forgot already, Joe. Yeah. Shoot. The, Joe's gonna fail his first. Test. There's just you know, so many. We're finishing phase one soon, and we're gonna have to give you a. I'm gonna record. Hey, y'all, let's make yeah. up our test questions because that's what I'm gonna IG live. Joe trying to answer some questions from phase one. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and we'll be we'll be at a bar because we'll all have our our shots, and uh, we'll IG live the the test phase one test. Yes. Um, not to be confused with phase one from uh, some phase one or phase two prototype kind of thing. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. All we got to get to, I'm gonna, we're going to at least get to tonight, right now, while we're recording, the the title sequence. Like, for where they say Avengers. We're almost there. So, <laughs> so Selvig explains and mentions Gamma and Hawkeye's in his perch. Uh, and I asked really quick. I can't remember now because we've been through all these movies. Is this Hawkeye's first appearance? No, no he was in Thor no. for a briefly. Second. For a briefly, mm-hmm. that's right. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. Was sort we of, talked about uh, it when he when... showed up. That's yeah. right. Yeah, for a second. Yeah, and he's kind of he's my least favorite. Like he's fucking shooting arrows. He's, I thought Bucky he's, was your he's least kind favorite of either. everybody's least favorite, but well, uh, Bucky, at least yeah. in, in comics he was a. It was interesting. Like he was like a uh, old circus performer <laughs> that uh, it was briefly, I think, had a life of crime. I guess he wasn't like this super shield assassin kind of guy. Mm. Uh, and he was also like some of his mojo gets gets taken away by Tony Stark being the anti authoritarian type because mm. Clint Barton was was kind of that. He he would butt heads with Captain America a lot uh, to the point where at one point. He left the Avengers to go lead a different team, uh, uh, the Thunderbolts, which we'll talk about later yeah. if uh, Timo ever does something, or in the Falcon series. But uh, so, yeah, he was like so, some of his swagger has been, hasn't translated into the movies as much. Uh, no. To make him more of a, uh, like a charming kind of uh, rogue. Although. We'll see what happens in the Disney Plus series, what they're doing with that. There's a Disney Plus Hawkeye series? Yeah. I hope he wears a purple mask with an H on it. I I, I (laughs) I doubt doubt it. But uh, there's... Keep your dreams um, alive. Right now. I have a poster somewhere in there with that. that. And I believe in the comic books... uh, uh, Barton and Natasha had a like a romantic relationship yeah, for a while. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It seems that like it seems like that's what they're kind of hitting at at this too, but maybe not. I don't know. I can't. So then 
the portal doors open on from both sides. Barton explains that whole bit that it's a portal. They didn't seem to get that or nothing happened on our end. What do you mean our end? You know, doors open from both sides. The portal opens and Loki appears and he right away turns Barton and Selvig and some other jackasses. Um, <laughs> that you wonder how, those guys don't ever end up being anything, right? It just turns those guys. They have to have some extra help. They have to have somebody drive the getaway cards, I guess. Right. Um, and then we get the whole line: an ant has no quarrel with a boot. Uh, mm-hmm. I love that. We have no quarrel with you. An ant has no. Are you gonna? Are you saying you're gonna step on us? Um, and I love that moment. And then uh, Loki and. Barton escape the whole escape scene while the base is crumbling, badass shooting, car chase, helicopter escape stuff. Uh, that's all fun and action packed right away, which is cool. And then I get Fury jumps out of that helicopter, and I'm like, uh, "Come on, uh, does he? He must have a super soldier serum too." I mean, in the comics, Nick Fury has the Infinity Formula, like I said, oh. uh, which is. Similar to him, but they haven't mentioned that so, at all. Okay, and so he's got to be a badass. He's jumped out of a goddamn helicopter and he's fine. Uh, yeah, it was pretty close to the ground, but because uh, it was crashing. I know. So you sound like such a cynic. Well, Every, <laughs> the scene opens, you're like, oh, these aliens. He jumps out the air, <laughs> out the helicopter. You're like, oh, helicopter. You're such a <laughs> cynic right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just, I just like, I keep thinking it's gonna be dumb, but then, but then. It's still Samuel L. Jackson, so I do have a belief that he can do anything. Like he's Samuel L. He Jackson. He can. Uh, say what again, motherfucker? God damn it. Sorry. So uh, I feel bad for poor Tiffany's friend who watch, listens to this with her child. Like, it's <laughs> the, the F bomb quote quotient. It's so, I think yeah, it's yeah. way. We had a lot of F bombs in yeah, this one. Wanna... He's 13. He's 13. Oh, okay. like, sure he or like Andy sounded like Mr. Leahy from Trailer Wait. Park Boys. I mean, he said shit. I don't know how many times. I was waiting for him to say a shit storm. You hear that, Andy? It's the shit birds coming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've been a little cuss heavy today. <laughs> That's too funny. Yep. And then, but, you know, you have to cuss when you're talking about Joss Whedon these days. I mean, listen. Yeah. King of the douches. Yeah, He's on a, a mountain of douchebaggery. What a piece I'm of just, garbage. I'm glad we're in a phase of Hollywood where people are like, no, no thanks. I will yep. not accept this crap lately these last couple yep. of years. Yep. You, sir, are king of the douches. <laughs> right? It's a whole patriarchy of them suckers. Yep, there is. We got to get him out. Uh, so then Fury calls Coulson. He says, "We officially have a level seven. We are at war." And Coulson says, "What do we do?" And then the Avengers title. Uh, That's what they do. So the Avengers yeah. Initiative. Avengers. We are at war. It, I might have walked around my house repeating that to my children <laughs> as if I was at war with them. Yep. A couple times when I watched it on Tuesday. Well, that's what I say every year around this time when the ants start coming coming in my house. <laughs> You're like, we are, we at, are war. at war. There's a line that the Hulk uses later in the movie that I use all the time, um, but I won't say it now. But it's one of my favorite lines to say because I think people have a misconception about my personality and want to know if I'm ever angry. And so when Hulk talks about his anger, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm always angry. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> I was going to say the Hulk's only got one line in this. Oh, you're talking about yeah. Oh, it happens because people are like, Timmy, do you ever get angry? And I'm like, legit. I will murder people. Uh, there's wow. a reason I watch a lot of Christmas movies. My Christmas movies keep me grounded and <laughs> level headed and, and we come less back. villainous. Well, or you know, I don't, know if you, I don't know if you listen to the episode we put out today, but the subtitle was Ho- yes. Holiday Movies and Toilet Soup. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Listen, people can make fun of me for my holiday movies all we want to, but I'm like, are you alive? Did I fuss at you? Today? <laughs> Did I yell about anything? All right, then. You're welcome. You better thank Hallmark for keeping me safe. <laughs> Piff safe space is Christmas movies. Well, you Listen. did. You did say your screen time goes up during the ho- Christmas movies. You watch, yeah, because they release a new one. There's like a certain week where they release a new one every day, and then every weekend there are more than one Hallmark channel. So news flash, oh, more than one Hallmark so, channel. 
So what about in July when there's the whole Christmas in July? Oh, I'm Are tuned you more in. Calm I'm then? tuned in. And I save Christmas movies. So if Netflix releases some, I'll save some from Netflix or Prime or Hulu to watch later. Because I know I'm going to need to space it out in the year. Because something's going to happen you? in the world where I'm angry. So let me <laughs> save some inventory. Well, Art, did you watch Holiday? No, that's one of my saved ones. Oh, shoot. I do have an apology that I realize I have to make. It's a little late now, but that episode, that just, to? That episode that just came out today, or a correction, not an apology. So correction that episode that came corner. out today, I've been referring, and I think all oh, this whole time, I've been referring to the Natalie Portman, Ashton Kutcher film as uh, Friends with Benefits, and it's not. It's, <laughs> That's uh, Amila Kunis and yeah. Justin Timberlake. Yeah, movie. it's... Um, it's no strings attached. It's similar plot lines. Yeah. It's just two different yeah. sets of actors. No strings attached and and friends with benefits. So now I challenge us as a nerd school sometime we have to do a live, maybe a watch party where we watch both of those movies simul- <laughs> at the same time. simultaneously. <laughs> picture Listen, in picture. Why we just I've watch watched Black them Swan both. Let's do it. Natalie Portman and Mila Kunis are both in Black Swan. We'll do scene mm-hmm. by scene. Uh, we'll do watch one scene of one of them, one scene of another one, and see if the stories line up. They're pretty. They're pretty similar. Yeah, but let's hold off for now on Avengers, uh, and we will. We'll we'll put a pin in it, and we'll come back and do another Avengers episode soon next time. Yeah, we might be able to stay on topic a little bit more. <laughs> no, we won't. Uh, we've never let's been able. Stop to. lying to ourselves. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if we've ever one time. <laughs> so, I but mean, it's fine. We're just hey, we're just kiki and we're just kiki and we're y'all. Kiki we're just kiki. Yeah. That's why uh, nerd conversations are usually pretty fun because you never know where they're going to go. Yeah, you yeah. never know. What's like, let's talk about the Avengers movie, and then you wind up talking about uh, who would win in a fight, Ant Man or and uh, Lords and killing a monkey. Kids. Yeah, <laughs> with rabies. Well, we talked a lot about Gambit on this episode for no reason. We did. Yeah. So, but that that'll be I just reason. T- I just recently picked up, like, um, uh, Has, was it Hasbro? Not Hasbro. Toy Biz. Toy Biz did a re release of their figures from, I want to say, the early 2000s. And, like, mm-hmm. the first, one of the first waves they had was, like, Rogue, Storm, and Gambit was in it. And a couple of months ago, I picked up the Gambit action figure because I. I'm a big Gambit fan. Oh my gosh. So we have a Gambit <laughs> fan and a Gambit hater. Yeah. Okay. I I mean, yeah. I you do you, boo. Game. So <laughs> Art Art, let me ask yeah. you this. As an adult, uh, you bought that action figure. Are you gonna keep it? Do uh, you keep it in the packaging? Oh, it's still in the cart. It's still in, it's still in the cart. Oh, it's still in I'm, the cart. I'm, you haven't bought it. It's still in the you no, know, I bought it, but it's on. It's a, it's it's not in the. It's on the. It's, you know they call what they call mint on card. So it's still on the oh, card. Oh, on like the card. Like like I wouldn't open it. Yeah, yeah. Like one of, one of the things I started doing in the pandemic is watching a lot of adult toy collectors. Yeah. And like I would never go as crazy as they go. But I like, don't recommend it. I don't yeah. recommend. I have a friend right now mm-hmm. who uh, has tends to fall off that wagon. Yeah. And he's. Buying a shit ton of transformers that he can't afford. <laughs> uh, that's ridiculous. So usually, what I do is like if it's something like I I like or a character that I like, I may you know like oh let's say if I'm with someone like oh I'm gonna pick this up just because. But like I could like it's just like buying like when I used to buy comic books, I would buy comic books. But then it was one of those things where it's like certain books I would just like go to the comic shop and maybe peruse them. But like I couldn't sit there. And devote the amount of money that you need to devote to like I mean like usually when I buy something I'm only spending like twenty thirty dollars on it yeah where like there are people buying these things called hot toys where you know you get like let's say it's a six scale Star Wars figure they're spending like three five three four five hundred dollars on them what? and they get like two and three at a time yeah yeah but it's just one of those things where like they're co- like they're action figures. But then they're also collectible. Yeah. Where like if you go if you walk in to like, say Toys Us, if you walk into Walmart or Target now, yeah. and you walk through the toy aisle, yeah. The I don't want to say the male toy aisle, but like where they have like the the action figures and things like that. Those aisles will always yeah. 
they will always be decimated. Like, because, like, the, 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 comp, the, the, the toy companies will release a line. It'll be limited. Like, Target will get something, and they'll say they only have two boxes for the entire yeah. store. And it's like two boxes, and it's not like you open a box that's like this, this. It's like you open a box, and it's the whole wave. It may be like right. two sets of the way. So like target, so like this one target get two boxes of these things. Where you have like, <laughs> let's say, two Kylo Rens for the entire store, and that's yeah. until they restock. And even then, if they restock, like they're literally. And again, I can say I bought the Gambit, I bought the '86 Jazz Transformer, but like there are people who get up in the morning at seven o'clock in the morning yeah. and stand outside, grown men and women. Running Bro. in, grabbing these toys. Yeah, the nerds know when the restock dates are. Yeah. They know when the shipments come in, and like, there's always like the one rare figure in the mm-hmm. thing where there's like there's six of this guy, six of this guy, and only two Kylo Rens, and so they know that's the one they need to grab as soon as it hits and the shelves so, because and that's so the one you, they could resell so, for. More. So they buy these and they store them for a while and then sell them years later for more money. So, yeah. Not or just have, you, turn them around right away. Years later. Yeah, like like I said, if, if it's a, a figure that comes out and it's one of those figures that's like is a low amount produced in that wave, it'll sell so it go out so fast. You can look on eBay where the figure was like twenty dollars at Target, it's now selling for like three, four thousand dollars. You know, somebody what? going out, some one person go out there and they'll buy the entire way. Like, like the, the new Masters of the Universe figures that come out. Yeah. Like right now, there's a shit ton. There you go, Andy. There's a shit ton of Evil Land, um, He Man, and Skeletor that you can find in all of the stores. But when they first came out, they were hard to find because people was like snatching them up. Like I say, it's like six bu- six figures come in the box, and the six figures in the wave. That's two boxes. You got twelve people so, trying to get so two boxes. So those people that bought, like you're saying, now they're everywhere. So the people that bought uh, all the evil lens and everything, and when they first came out, are they stupid now because everybody can get them? No, they're not. They're, they're not. Or they sold them then. It's, it's it's like the stock market. It's like yeah. they probably they they bought them and they sold them. Boom. And like now. It's one of those things where, like, it's because there's so many, it's easy to find. You probably won't make as much money. But, like, certain things, certain figures that come out, like, they, they did um, G.I. Joe, right? Yeah. Roadblock. This is That's my favorite. Number that's one. my favorite character. That's, like, a number one of a roadblock. So, it's like, you, you, you see it when it first came out, no one was able to find it. Like, now you go in the stores, you probably won't see those. But it's like it's it's one like I have a friend. He just sent me this picture of like some Jordan cards that we got when he was we was young. Yeah. And it was like on eBay was someone selling exact same card on a plaque that he has for like ten thousand dollars. Oh my like, goodness. So it's like this whole like he still has like these old spawn figures. Like we used to go to the store. We used to like get to like the little spawn figures. Like he still has these old spawn figures meant on card. That like you can like when you first like it's one of the things like you it's like you sit there like hey you go in the store like let me buy this now because I think this might be a thing so it's almost like like I say buying a stock it's like you a like, stock hey. guessing it's gonna be popular yeah. so when like, you say mint yeah. mint on card so you have that you have that gambit right now mint on card so well it's it's, it's mint on card because like one it's it's still the same because it's like it's not it's not open yeah and it's it's the way you know you would find it in but the don't you have to keep it like in a temperature controlled safe yeah, or you know i mean like you can say, not so, all of them. air damage because yeah, I, mean, I got a couple sometimes like, but it's some some it's, it also depends on the type of material like if the company uses archival material, yeah, which means it won't yellow under sun or whatever. This is a little artistic term for you. Well, yeah, because I, um, I got like a, I got like a Randy Moss. Like, remember when they did those action figures for a while for football players? Like those the starting lineups. Starting lineups. I have a Randy Moss mm-hmm. one, and I was like, oh, I'll save this because he's a Hall of Famer. He's gonna be, but it's been just laying around my garage where it's all so it's all yellow, like the plastics yeah, all yellow. Of, 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 yeah, something like that. Like when, when so what happens when you first get it, you know, you probably want to put it in like a um a uh protective case, but that's only if you've had it for like a really long time. Like unless some of these newer things, it takes longer for the packaging to yellow. So Andy- like starting lineups, this is like what, ninety one, ninety two, something like that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So like you buy some 
No, 90, 90, like Nor- 98 is when Moss was drafted, when he was drafted. So that was his rookie year. Okay, so, so that, like a 90. Here, this here is a weird convergence of nerds and, and jocks sports. right now. Well, you're talking about sports action figures. Well, when, well, when you get back to the Star Wars action figures, like Andy and I have a buddy who he had. <laughs> I think I could be wrong on this, but this was my impression of it that when he was a kid, he didn't mm-hmm. open up any of his Star Wars figures. He kept them mm-hmm. all in the packaging, so wow. his childhood was sacrificed for his future. So he never got to play with any of his toys. Like everybody else is playing is with their toys. toys or like his but then he, like but he, if he still has them, he's one of those people who are like you know what I have like just like well he like, in college like, in college he had them all hanging up on the wall, and uh, he, he has somebody started a fire at his apartment and they all got right, destroyed. Yeah. His yeah, whole childhood I, was I, destroyed. <laughs> I had stuff like that where like it was smoke damage. Yeah, so what I like oh once the smoke damage got to, I'm like yeah whatever. But it's like one of those things, like when I was a kid, not even a kid, when I was in my teens, I remember like my nephew would like be like, I used to have stuff hanging on my wall. And he'd be like, oh, can I play with your toys? And I, <laughs> in classic nerd form, that's not a toy. It's a collectible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that, this is hardcore nerd stuff right now. Yeah. This is, I, I called it the sickness. I had the collector sickness for a while. I was all into hmm. the Marvel Legends figures. I wanted at some point... To have a, like to be able to have a room in my house, back when I was single, of course, uh, that <laughs> where I could just set up all the cool Marvel figures and act, cool action poses. Oh, and then for a long time, I did have a spare room in my house. I didn't do anything with them, and I realized this is dumb. I'm just keeping them in crates. <laughs> there's, a, there's there's actually a couple of dudes in the Carolinas here, like one who's actually he he he's in uh, Charlotte, who has like this. His name, his, his YouTube name is like Kent Pool or something, but he has like a shit ton. I don't want to say like a whole lot of Marvel Legends and things like that. And it's like these people they go out, they do these these toy hunts, and they come back and they just spend so much money at one time on these action figures. And it's like it's it's cool, but it, it, it almost. But I guess now the thing, the, the new thing now is we've gone away from collectibles and action figures. This is out there, but now we're doing NFTs. This is another segue yeah, where we're buying yeah. digital code. Yeah, I barely and understand saving. that. Yeah. Well, it's like it's crazy. It's like you sit there, you can buy like a basketball moment that like you can c- clearly get a GIF or a GIF of <laughs> online, and it's like they're selling for like ten thousand dollars. I don't understand. This <laughs> I, I'm no not sense. young enough to understand. So that. I mean, I even know artists know that they're they're artists. Who are taking their work and they're creating digital code of their work and they're actually selling it. Yeah, it's crazy. And like once you buy it, you literally own the code. To it's like the code is the code and the serial number. It could be the same image, but it just you know you apply a serial number to it and a different string of code that makes it unique to the owner. So well, that's are, a lot of. Are you saying I, sh- I there. should stop buying all these pogs? <laughs> <laughs> no, no you collecting. Not. I think you're totally fine with pogs. It's but totally I was going to say another thing. I was going to say, Joe, is like you know, you're, you're you're a big wrestling fan. You remember Zack Ryder? You know who Zack Ryder is? Woo woo woo. No, I was. You don't know I, Zach I, I stopped watching wrestling in the '90s, in the early '90s. Okay. Well, Zack Ryder, aka Matt Cardona, aka the Million Dollar Broski, <laughs> he has a podcast called <laughs> The Major Wrestling Figure Podcast, and it's him and his other dude named Brian Myers, and a couple other dudes. Even Hornswoggle, Hornswoggle, you know who Hornswoggle is, right? No. Oh wow. The yeah, Midget Leprechaun Wrestler, but they 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 um <laughs> Midget Leprechaun Wrestler <laughs> they. they <laughs> <laughs> they they have like a like I said a wrestling figure podcast and they go out buying all these different action figures and things and he talks about how you know when he gets these action figures like some of the stuff he goes and get is stuff he used to have when he was a kid and he used to like rip it off the package and play with it or whatever yeah. and now he has so much money that he can go out there and get these same like he bought this one figure for like ten thousand dollars that he had them it was actually oh, on the Miz he actually had the Miz pick it up for him. And like the Miz spent ten thousand on one, and then bought a cheap vert, like a second printing of it or whatever, and took it to a show to give to him, yeah. and ripped it off the cart 
and he almost <laughs> lost his shit. But then the men's produced the ten thousand dollar version of it, and it's like an action figure from like a WWF action figure from like nineteen nineties or something or whatever. But like wow. their bodies, you know, the figures that they used to have as kid that they played with. Now you can go out and you can buy, you know, some sell online, maybe selling it Mentone card. Or they have like some <laughs> some company I feel like, you know, back in the day we had this. Let's just re release this and, you know, make money off of it now. Yeah. So Well that poor like, tr- I just think you know, the whole thing it all sums up to it's like so crazy. It's all insane. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's no way you could win. At least I couldn't win. I'd screw up. And I just think of that that guy Ethan who he sacrificed his whole childhood, and then it all went up in smoke. <laughs> and now, yeah. now he's a damaged person because he never got to play with his toys. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there was more than that that made him damaged. But yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> but that's enough nerddom. That's a lot of nerd stuff. Yeah, uh, it was, it was, it's a sickness. We got to end this it's episode. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Yeah, like one or two here and there is good. Yeah, but don't it's go out and spend. Don't don't work your, your 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 job just so you can spend. Don't don't take your your paycheck, don't your six hundred dollar paycheck, your, your and buy a six hundred dollar figure. Yeah, yeah. Don't be yeah. a completist. That's right. that's the sickness. Oh my it's god! Like they gotta have them all. All right, let's end this episode. Right. Somebody end it. All right. Enjoy all right, your I... queso. <laughs> what did you, you say? Said enjoy the queso. Enjoy your queso. I enjoyed the dip also. I just want you guys to know why you sat there and talked about collectible items. I love Disney a lot. And I just bought some Disney straw toppers in the middle of that whole conversation. (laughs) 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 I was like, I don't really collect things. I heard those clicks. I heard you clicking. A lot of money on Disney merch. Yes, Disney merch. I know, but I do not jeopardize my paychecks. Right. Nothing right. is over the top. I did buy an expensive coach purse because yes. it had Princess Tiana on it, but it was within my budget. Um, and I won't buy any merch anytime soon. Nerds roll. Okay, we've ended that episode. So let's end it. We're oh ending class. it now. I hope you didn't hear dogs barking in the back. I didn't hear any dogs or cats. president no more but evidently they don't see we in the street still poor still more incarceration of my kids been by the prisons and people thinking this election to end it racism proud of a pessimism glad to see obama but don't expect me not to speak out when i still see problems the nerd school podcast nerd school is a member of the queen city podcast network powered by ortho carolina now offering video visits so you can take control of your orthopedic care from the comfort of your home Schedule online at orthocarolina.com. OrthoCarolina, you improved. <laughs> Listen, people can make fun of me for my holiday movies all we want to, but I'm like, are you alive? Did I fuss at you today? <laughs> Did I yell about anything? All right, then. You're welcome. You better thank Hallmark for keeping me safe. <laughs>